Hey guys, my name is Sam and today we're going to be looking at the 2021 High Level Maths Paper 1 Question 1. So today's question is a complex numbers question and a lot of students find this topic a very tricky one on the Leaving Cert Maths course. However, hopefully with some clever thinking, I'll be able to explain to you how to do this question. So let's get into the video. So this is a complex numbers question worth 30 marks. So for part A, there are a number of different ways to do this question. However, a couple of those methods only apply for this particular set of numbers. And so I'm going to show you a method that will work for all complex numbers questions of this form. So in part A, we have 4 minus 2i divided by 2 plus 4i is equal to 0 plus ki, where k is an integer, i squared is equal to negative 1, and we're being asked to find the value of k. So basically, what we have to do for this question is we have a fraction that involves two complex numbers on the numerator and the denominator. So what we have to do is we must simplify this fraction so it is just a complex number with no fractions. So if one thing we need to know about complex numbers before we tackle this question is we must know about complex conjugates. So if we have a complex number z and it's of the form a plus bi, the complex conjugate of z, which is written as z bar like this, is equal to a minus bi. You may be wondering yourself how on earth this could be useful, but the reason that complex conjugates are so useful in complex numbers is that when you multiply a complex number by its complex conjugate, the answer you get is going to be a squared plus b squared. And the reason this is so special is because this is a real number and has no imaginary parts. So the reason this is helpful is because if we multiply the top and bottom of our fraction by the complex conjugate of our denominator, we'll be left with a real number on the bottom and a complex number on the top. So let's do that now. So as you can see, our denominator is 2 plus 4i, and so our complex conjugate of a denominator is 2 minus 4i. So as you can see, I've multiplied the top and bottom by 2 minus 4i, and because we're multiplying the top and bottom by the exact same thing, this is the equivalent of multiplying by 1, so it actually has no effect on the value of our fraction. So after multiplying it out, we now must simply just simplify the top and the bottom by multiplying out all our brackets. So after simplifying it out, we have 8 minus 16i minus 4i minus 8 divided by 4 plus 16. And some simple arithmetic will show that this is equal to negative 20i divided by 20, which is simply equal to negative i. And remember, our question told us that all of this was equal to 0 plus k times i. So it can be easily shown that k is equal to negative 1. So this is our final answer, and finding this will give you the full 10 marks for this question. Moving on to part b, we've been told to find the square root of negative 5 plus 12 times i. And it says give both of your answers in the form a plus bi. And that's actually a hint as to how we could solve this question. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the square root of negative 5 plus 12i equal a plus bi. So from here, what we're going to do is we're simply going to raise both sides to the power of 2. So on the left-hand side, that will eliminate the square root. And then the right-hand side will be squaring a binomial. So as you can see on the right in purple, I've simply just reminded us how you square out a binomial. So now what we've been left with is negative 5 plus 12i is equal to a squared plus 2ab times i minus b squared. So now how we're going to solve this is we're simply going to let the real parts on the left-hand side equal the real parts on the right-hand side. And then we're going to let the imaginary parts on the left-hand side equal the imaginary parts on the right-hand side. So the real parts are all the numbers without an i and the imaginary parts are all the numbers with an i. So as you can see, I've equated the real and I've equated the imaginary numbers. So looking at the equation where there are imaginary numbers, we're simply going to divide both sides by 2 times i. So from here, we can see that 6 is equal to a times b. So what we're going to do is we're going to now divide both sides by a to find b in terms of a. So we have 6 divided by a is equal to b. So what we can do with this is we can plug this in for b in our real numbers equation. So after doing some multiplication, 
and subbing in our at b, we have negative 5 is equal to a squared minus 36 over a squared. Now what we want to do is to get rid of that fraction on the right hand side, we're just going to multiply everything by a squared. And after doing that, and bringing all the terms over to one side, our equation will look like this. So what we have now is we have a to the power of 4 plus 5a squared minus 36 equals 0. So now we're going to factorize this and try find solutions for a squared. So we have a squared plus 9 times a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So we know a squared can be equal to negative 9 or a squared can be equal to 4. So now to solve for a, we simply must take the square roots of both sides. So we have that a is equal to plus or minus 3 times i or a is equal to plus or minus 2. However, the question reads a or and b must be real numbers. So we must reject this answer on the left. And so our final answer for what a is, is a is equal to plus or minus 2. So from here, we're going to substitute this value for a into our formula of a and b to find our two solutions for b. So looking on the right hand side, we can see for a equals 2, b is going to be equal to 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. And then we can see for a is equal to negative 2, we have b is equal to 6 divided by negative 2, which is equal to negative 3. And finally, we have found our answer. So what we have to do now is put our answer in the form a plus b times i. So our final answer is 2 plus 3i, comma, negative 2 minus 3i. And finding this will give you the full 10 marks for this question. Moving on to part C, the question reads, use de Moivre's theorem to find the three roots of z cubed is equal to negative 8. So first of all, let's remind ourselves of what de Moivre's theorem is, and that is in the logbook, so let's have a look at that. So looking at the algebra section, we can see de Moivre's theorem is written out for us here, and we're going to use this to answer our question. So before we can go any further, we must find out what z cubed is in polar form. So on the right hand side, I've quickly just drawn an argand plane. So we're going to plot our complex number, z cubed, which is simply just negative 8. So let's say that's just here in our diagram. So to find our argument, which is theta, we can simply find our angle, which is going to be this, which is simply 180 degrees. Now to find our r, which is the distance from the origin to our complex number, which is going to be this distance here, that distance is simply 8. So that means our r is equal to 8 and our theta is equal to 180 degrees or in radian form equal to pi. So now let's use de Moivre's theorem to try and find z. So from here we must take the cubed root of both sides. So de Moivre's theorem tells us we simply must take the cube root of 8 and then to find the cube root of cos pi plus i sine pi is we simply multiply our angle or our argument by 1 over 3. However, remember, we need it in the general form. So before we can do that is we must add 2n pi to both of our arguments before we multiply by 3. So we've now found the general form of our complex number z, which is the cubed root of z cubed. So now we must simply just plug in different values for n to find our three different cubed roots of z cubed. So we have for when n is equal to 0, z is equal to 2 times cos pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. However, the question has asked us to give our answers in the form a plus bi, which is the rectangular form of our complex number. So let's use our calculator to transfer this polar form into rectangular form. So how we're going to do this is you're going to press shift and then our subtract sign to bring up our rectangular form function. And then we simply must put in our r, which is 2, and then press shift, closing bracket to bring up our comma. And then we're going to interpret our argument, which is pi over 3. And now we're simply going to press equals, and we'll get that for x, which is our a, is equal to 1. And how we're going to find y is we're going to press alpha y, which is going to be equal to the square root of 3. And so our answer is 1 plus the square root of 3. Now we're going to repeat this process for n equals 1. So we have for n equals 1 that z is equal to 2 times cos pi plus i sine pi. And once again, we can use our calculator to find that in rectangular form, this is simply going to be equal to negative 2. And finally, for n equals 2, we have that z is equal to 2 times cos 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3, which in rectangular form is equal to 1 minus root 3. So as you can see, 
we've found our three answers, but I'd always recommend just making it clear to the examiner what your three answers are. So let's just underline all our three answers. And doing this will give us the full 10 marks for this question. So I really hope you guys find today's video useful. In my opinion, it was quite a tricky question and actually involved a lot of work and would probably take up a lot of time on exam day. However, knowing how to do the question before you go into it will save you a lot of time. So I hope you're all having a nice day and I'll see you guys soon.